Corporate Finance OneNote Practice Problem. In this presentation, we're going to work a practice problem in OneNote related to the creation of an income statement. Get ready, because it's time to take a stance with corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you would like to follow along in OneNote, you're not required to do so, but if you have access to it and would like to, we are in the 216 Make an Income Statement section under the Practice Problems tab. Closing this back up, we're going to have the information up top that will be related to the income statement. We're basically going to take that information, put it into the structure of an income statement, getting used to the idea or the concept or the structure of an income statement so that we can be used to using it for our financial analysis, for our uh, financial accounting and our corporate finance. Remember that as we look at this from the standpoint of corporate finance as opposed to uh, corporate accounting, we're going to take the approach of constructing the income statement a little bit differently because if we were doing this from an accounting standpoint, we would probably be going, going all the way back to basically journal entries, building up one journal entry at a time to the actual financial transactions that will then be used in the form of debits and credits to create a trial balance from which we will then create the financial statements, including an income statement and a balance sheet, the main two kind of statements that we would be making, and then the cash flow statement and whatnot. But uh, on a on a finance kind of standpoint, we're not really going to go all the way back typically to the to the transactions. We're basically because our main goal here is the analysis, meaning we need to know what the structure of the financial statements are. We need to know the components of them so that we can use them for analysis, including ratio analysis uh, and other kind of decision making analysis that we will have on it. So we're not going to typically go all the way back and spend as much time on financial transactions although we need to have some concept of them and we're not going to be looking so much as the debits and credits we're going to be looking at the accounting equations still however which will be the balancing concepts assets equal liabilities plus equity or assets minus uh, liabilities equal equity so we still need to understand these things but we're going to look at them from the structure of basically the end product and instead of going back to the actual transactions and instead of focusing in on the building blocks being the debits and credits as much. So we're gonna have our information up top, the selling and admin expenses, depreciation, revenue, interest expense, cost of goods sold. We wanna get used to basically constructing that, seeing how they will be formatted in an income statement. We wanna have a visual, an idea of exactly what an income statement will look like. We wanna know what to expect when we see an income statement. We'll typically be looking at with a, with a finance uh, course, or finance, when we're thinking about finance, we're looking for a multi-step income statement, which is usually going to be a longer type of income statement because we want to see more subtotals on which we can do more calculations with. So we're going to, we want to memorize the structure of this multi-step income statement so that when we see one, uh, a long income statement, it doesn't kind of throw us off. So that we're just going to keep practicing this structure. So we're going to say, all right, let's put this into an income statement type of format. We're going to always be starting off with revenue. So revenue is going to be the top line. It might be called sales. If we sell things, it would be called sales. It might be called fees earned. It might be called income, but it's the top line. The type of account will be revenue. Remember that the revenue is basically the goal of every, everything else on the income statement, as well as on the balance sheet, right? From a financial standpoint is to basically, you know, generate revenue. Uh, obviously we want to generate revenue with, with the least amount of cost, but Revenue is kind of like the, the thing that we're aiming towards. It's the objective. It's our performance in the measure. How are you doing? How well are you doing? Well, it, you know, the revenue is going to be one of the major kind of things that's going to indicate to us how well we are doing. Obviously, the bottom line here, net income or earnings after taxes will also be an, an indication as well because that's how efficient we've been doing. But, but revenue is going to be the objective. Why do we have assets on the books, on the balance sheet, why do we have these assets? Because they're gonna help us generate revenue in the future, that's the objective. Why do we have liabilities? We needed to finance ourselves in order to gener help us generate revenue, right? Why do we have expenses? Because we needed to expend money in order to help generate revenue. So top line revenue performance statement. Also remember that we're talking about something that has to have a time frame, has to have a beginning and an end sometime in which we earn the revenue in. So that means that for the year ended, 12 months possibly of time, this is how much revenue we earned or for the month's time period, this is how much revenue we earned and so on. Next, we have the cost of goods sold, which is an expense type of account. Rem remember that most of the time when you think of expenses, you're probably thinking about times when you spend money, such as paying the utility bill or the phone bill, utility expense, phone expense, or something like that. In this case, we're still spending an asset 
not money, however. We're spending the inventory. We bought the inventory in the past, possibly for cash, but the, 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 uh, the cash that we spent might have happened last year, might not be in this time period. So even when the cash went out, that's not when we're recording the timing of us using it to help us generate revenue. We're recording it as being used to help generate revenue when we consumed the inventory, used it, spent it, gave it away in order to help generate the revenue. So this is kind of a deviation note from, from a cash flow state basis because we could have spent the cash not during this period. Maybe we spent the cash last year. That bothers some people because they say, well, that's I want, I want to focus in on cash. I'm focused in on my cash flow. We will have cash flow. The cash flow will be on the, the cash flow statement, statement of cash flows. But notice that you can distort the income statement performance-wise by buying a lot of inventory or not buying inventory, having stockpiles of inventory, if you were using a cash basis, which could really distort the performance of the income statement. Therefore, the accrual method would be better in this case to put the, put the cash, the inventory on the books as an asset until you sell it, until you consume the asset in order to help you generate revenue. That would be then in the form of cost of goods sold. Again, we will follow the cash with the statement of cash flows. Then we've got the gross profit, which is going to be revenue minus the cost of goods sold. That's going to give us the gross profit of 340000 So we have the uh, 340000 of the gross profit. This is a subtotal along the way. Remember, we're just going to have these subtotals along the way until we get to the bottom line, which is going to be the net income. Then we've got the selling and admin expenses. So these are going to be the other expenses. These are the two main expense groups that we would have. Selling expenses, admin expenses. So you might see two other subcategories with accounts within those subcategories. In other words, selling might include things like uh, you know, the commission sales, the people that work in the sales office, people that work in the store, the sales store and whatnot. Admin expenses might include anything in the corporate office, any admin expenses, executive pay and, and that kind of thing. So we're going to subtract that out. That, and then we're going to take out the depreciation. Again, we're going to break out the depreciation because it's a really great example of the uh, difference between a cash method and an accrual method. Because once again, like in the selling and admin expenses, we might have things like the utility expense, the phone expense, you know, expending on, you know, postage and supplies where we typically spend the money basically at the same point in time that we record the expense. So the cash flow statement and accrual basis will be basically the same because the point in time that we spent the money is the point in time that we consumed the expenses that we used. However, the depreciation is going to be a deviation from that. And you can see it's the most obvious reason we have to deviate from a cash basis to an accrual basis, because if we did not, the income statement would be heavily distorted. So for example, if we purchased, you know, equipment that cost $300,000 this year, and we expensed it, even if we paid cash for it under a cash basis, we would expense it if it was a cash basis, it would really distort, it would increase our expenses a lot this year. And when we compared the performance, how we did overall this year compared to next year, it would look like we had a really bad year compared to next year because we have this giant expense on the books related to equipment we purchased that is benefiting many years into the future. That could distort decision making. So that's what the most obvious example why we would, we would deviate or move away from a cash basis, put that equipment on the books as an asset, then allocate the cost to the... Uh, periods that are beneficial with the use of depreciation. So that's what depreciation expense is going to be, not necessarily a cash related item. Again, that bothers people sometimes because they say, hey, well, I want to know the cash that flew in and out because I'm going to make my decisions on how much cash I have, right? Well, we're still going to have cash because that's going to be the cash flow statement. But we, we also want to have performance. We would like both. I'd like to be able to say, hey, how did we do on a performance basis uh, measurement even though we made these large cast distributions that were that were not just for this period that will benefit in the future. How can I be fair to this year and next year? How can I compare them fairly to each other? Because if you can if you're imagining like the year arguing for itself, you know, this this year's versus next year, the next year is going to say it's not fair that you're going to that, uh, you know, you're going to count this year would say it's not fair that you're going to count the fact that I had this huge cost when the cost that I expended this year is benefiting, you know, 30 years into the future, right? 
And that's, that's kind of true. So that's not really fair for us to say, well, you know, that was an expense this period, <laughs> you know, if you're trying to compare the two. So that's going to be our major example of the deviation. But on a cash flow statement, we will show that, that cash disbursement outflow of cash uh, going out at that point. That'll give us the operating profit. Now, remember, the operating profit represents the operating profit is calculated by the last subtotal we had, gross profit, minus the selling and admin, minus the depreciation, gives us the operating profit. Operating profit means it's the profit that's from our normal operations, the things we normally do. You can expect these things to happen in the future. If you want to have a fair comparison of what we do, how we do what we do, or how good we are at what we do, then you want to be checking out this component or this component of our financial statements because the things underneath operating profit are not part of our, our essential business possibly. There might be some things there that are not you know, really part of our main business. For example, main example we're going to be using is the interest expense. We may put interest expense below operating profit because like if you're going to compare this company to another company that do the same thing, then m maybe the other company doesn't need a loan, doesn't need financing, right? The financing isn't really part of the normal operations. If you want to look how efficient the company is in terms of what it is that they do, then you should be looking at their normal operations. The fact that they have the interest expense represents the fact that they have financing that, that you know, this company might not have as much ex access to capital as another company that might have access to capital, which doesn't need them to have a loan. They might have got capital from the investments of the owner. They might have been in business longer. And, and therefore, it's not really part of their normal kind of operation. So we're going to put that below the operating profit. And there, there could be other kind of things that would be that could fall into that category, right? We can say this is a, you know, something that's not normal of our operations, or it might not be part of our normal operating profit. So then we got our earnings before taxes. That's going to be our basically net income before we take into consideration what the taxes will be. So that's going to be the operating profit, the last subtotal, the last stop along the way to get down to net income minus the interest expense earnings before profit, 92000 So we're not quite there yet because the last thing we're always going to include on the corporate accounting is the taxes. The taxes we're going to use and calculate based on the earnings before taxes. Earnings, bef you know, Uncle Sam, uh, the, the government wants their money as we earn money. They see themselves as a, as a silent partner. They want their money as we earn it. So we're typically going to have to calculate our profit and then the taxes on it. Also note that because the taxes rise with earnings, it kind of distorts our performance measures. So taxes really mess up, you know, the performance measures because because they're kind of disincentivizing. Obviously, they go up <laughs> as uh, as as earnings go up, basically. So they can kind of dis they can kind of uh, distort you know some of the calculations we might do to see just how we're doing in terms of uh, performance measures. Also note again that we're going to be using a rate uh, to calculate this based on generally the book income, but the corporation is going to take into consideration all you know the tax effect and the difference between book and tax and all that type of stuff and try to come up with an estimated rate that they can then use to calculate based on the book income. Oftentimes. To, to help us out with that. So that's why you can have a rate that we will we'll be using there. And then we're going to have the uh, earnings after taxes, which is going to be the earnings before taxes minus the taxes will give us our earnings after taxes. This is basically the net income. This is the bottom line. So if you hear the term, the top line of the income statement, which is a little less common, but still used, that'd be the revenue. That'd be the top line. And then the bottom line, which is basically the net income or the earnings after taxes. And that's going to be after all the expenses. So obviously, you know, and, and just remember that if you if you whenever you're dealing with people and performance, it doesn't matter what the performance is that you're trying to measure. If you're trying to measure your job performance, or if you're trying to measure our department versus another department, or if you're trying to measure how good an athlete is comparing one athlete to another, people will tend to use numbers to to distort the picture, right? Our goal here is to use the numbers to have a fair picture, as fair a picture as possible. So, but just realize that when you're when you're listening to people debate things on these numbers, uh, you know, a lot of people say, you know, that that people can use statistics to basically lie. There's truth to that, right? Numbers can be confusing in terms of of how they're going to be used. And our goal here is to take a take a 
bunch of different views so that we we understand and we can present the numbers fairly so just like anything anyone making an argument can distort the situation with words right facts can be used to distort the situation by misrepresenting the facts so in other words people the first way you can consider someone trying to misrepresent how well they are doing is to is to say if they're trying to say they're doing well they're going to represent the revenue they're going to say hey, look how much revenue we made and it, and it could be the fact that they spent a lot of money to make that revenue right so they'd be emphasizing the top line and then they might not be emphasizing the bottom line because they might have expended say they have a lot of advertising possibly or something like that in order to generate the revenue so they may not be emphasizing the bottom line that's one way to emphasize uh to distort a picture maybe and and when you start to look at the financial data you want to start looking at different things so you can get a fuller picture there's not one number that really really does it Re revenue is significant if it's comparing one company to another but but also you got to think about well how much are you spending to generate that revenue you know how much of how efficient are you and then and then obviously if you're if you're emphasizing the bottom line you know that might be a you know you'd want to take a look at both of them and come in comparison when you're comparing to uh, another company you know you want to compare how how much revenue was generated and how how much it costs in order to generate that revenue you want to think about you know the differences between the financing and whatnot why is it you know the case that there might be a disparity between how much was expended and, and whatnot. So just remember that that as you start to look at income statement, a performance statement, you want to think about these kind of arguments, just like you would have with arguments of, you know, people arguing who's doing better, what department's doing better, who should get a raise or something like that. Same kind of arguments, which kind of which sports person is better than the other sports person, which team is better than the other team. Well, the only way to represent that fairly is to look at the data take pictures of the data, take a picture from different angles of the data, and then present that data fairly. And when people misrepresent the data, when they're not fair about the data, then you want to be able to pick that out and say, no, that, you know, I think you're, you know, you're not t giving us a full picture of, of what's going on here. Let's do the same thing with a, with another income statement. We'll go through it one more time. Just, we want to memorize basically the format of the income statement this is our performance statement we got our new set of data same kind of thing we'll just we'll just go through these new new numbers and then uh, pick out our information so we're going to say revenue is going to be the top this time we've got the 2 million uh, 50 2 million 50 we've got the cost of goods sold that means how much we expended that's inventory that's going to be our major inventory line remember that the revenue top line minus the cost of goods sold is going to give us the gross profit so that's if we sell things, we will not have a cost to get sold if we have a service company like a law firm or something like that. Then we have the gross profit minus the selling and admin. Remember that these are group categories. So we could have selling and then subcategory of expenses under it, admin, and then subcategory of expenses under it, which it could include commissions for selling, could include like a telephone and utility for the store and whatnot. Admi administrative could you include salaries for the administrative office could include telephone and utilities for the for the uh, administrative office the corporate office and whatnot depreciation we're going to break out here because again that's going to be our major comparison one a very big comparison comparing the accrual basis and the cash basis this and and so we'll take a look at that when we get to our cash flow statements then we're going to take our gross profit minus our other categories gross profit minus the selling and admin uh, minus the depreciation to get the operating profit operating profit is our oper is our profit from standard type of operations uh, that we have then we're going to take things that are outside the operation including that say interest income which we're, we would only have if we needed to finance the company to take a loan out operating profit minus the other items including interest income in this case gives us the earning before taxes these are the earnings before we consider how much we owe in taxes then we will have to estimate the taxes uh and that and we'll have the taxes that we will then pay that will be based on the earnings taxes will go up as earnings go up and that's going to give us our earnings after taxes the bottom line note that if you were to compare say this second set of numbers to the first set of numbers here it would be difficult to make the comparison these might be two different companies right because revenue is a lot less here and the cost of goods sold uh, you know, all the numbers are going to be less here because this 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 company generates uh, less revenue. So you might say you might be saying, well, this is a larger company. Maybe maybe you can imagine this company up top saying, I I'm in, in the same industry as this other company. 
that makes more money than we do, but I'd like to learn from them. So how could this company then, then learn from the other company? You can't really do the comparison on the performance with the dollars. It doesn't make any sense. I can't really say, well, we made you know gross profit of 340000 and they made gross profit of 1544000 That doesn't really make sense. So, and, and it's just like if you were to compare performance in a job or performance of like um, athletes, which is just another job, right? You're trying to compare the performance of how an athlete did then you, you can't really compare like how many hits one guy got versus another person when they have different amounts of at bats you can't you can't compare how many free throws uh one basketball player has made compared to how many free throws another has made when one player gets fouled a lot more than the other player they have more shots than the other player so how can you make the comparison you have to use ratios so once we have the income statement the structure of the income statement then we can start to consider ratios such as gross profit percent, which would be 1544000 divided by 2020000. And we could say, okay, well, this one has a gross profit percent. They're making, you know, after cost of goods sold, you know, 75 cents or so on the dollar, on every dollar. So, so you can do a comparison such as that, which might give you some information, right? I could do that up here and say, all right. This one is 340 divided by 500, and that's going to be 0.68, right? So that this company is making, uh, seven, I think it was 75 cents on on the dollar for the gross profit versus versus the the 68 percent, right? You could start to do comparisons like that. You could take the net income and and do the the comparison. Let's take the earnings before taxes because taxes kind of distort things. The 92,000 is is our ours our total earnings divided by the 500,000 so that's going to be 18 so you got 18 cents on the dollar every sale you're getting around you know 18 cents on on uh net income before taxes let's do that down here you could start to say all right well down here we've got earnings of the 93200 divided by the 2050000 and you got 45 here so it's so you could start to do comparisons like that and you can start to say well why you know why is why is that you know why why are th those relationships you would think would be similar just like you would you would think that uh, if you took the average at bats you know uh how many how many times they got on base for the average at bats and whatnot or how many free throws they made on average is is an attempt to to make some better comparisons again that's they're not perfect attempts because averages can have points in time where they where they're not as effective but again we what we're doing is we're going to take all these once we have the income statement down then we can start to break down the analysis so that we have a picture of what's happening looking at it from different angles so then we can we can tell a better story about what is going on and then make make better decisions based on that information